Hello, I'm here today to talk about the very boring logistical problem of representation of infinite dimensional systems and time delay systems in particular. So the rationale behind this research is the disconnect between the modeler and the software developer or control theorist. So in particular, given a specific model of a network of time delay systems, we have very specific information about the structure of that problem, which delays are, which channels are affected by which delays. However, by necessity, the control theorist or model or software developer has to be system agnostic. So it has to be able to handle a large variety of time delay systems and therefore loses some information about the structure of the model. The question then is how to take a model and convert it to a form which has a particular structure which can be exploited by the, al by the software algorithm. So if you start at the question of representation, the standard representation of a time delay system is the delay differential equation, where it's parameterized by nine parameters, which represent the ODE dynamics of the system. But then each delay also has nine possible ways it can affect the dynamics. So in particular for each delay, there's nine parameters which parameterize the effect of each of these stated inputs on the dynamics. And so when we're constructing uh, the infinite dimensional component of this for say simulation or controller synthesis or analysis, the infinite dimensional history of the system which can affect the dynamics gets very large. So in particular for each of these finite dimensional components we have to construct a history corresponding to each of the delays. So if we look at this, for each delay, we have to include all of those and then discretize up our history. So if we're just interested in the simulation problem and we have conversion to an ODE, we have n discretization points. Now the total number of ODEs we get out of this is the number of vectors in this vector. So n plus m plus p times the number of delays, because remember, each of these things can affect each of the delayed components, times the number of discretization points. So if you just had, say, 100 states and 100 delays, you'd instantly get to a 10,000 dimensional vector, which then you have to discretize. And so the number of ODE states is 10,000 times uh, n. Now, obviously, 10,000n is intractable, and so we would like to find ways of representing these systems which have particular structure in them. And this rationale applies not to just to simulation, but to controller synthesis analysis in general. And so, in general, we find that the software tools that we are thinking about generally are tractable when the number of states times the number of delays is less than 50. So, in 50 individual uh, infinite dimensional components is sort of the limit of what is tractable given current technologies. So this uh, framework also applies to neutral type systems. The only difference between uh, the DDE and the neutral delay system is the presence of this derivative in the, uh, in the vector. So we won't concentrate on neutral systems very much. So what is a representation which is not the DDE and then not the neutral delay system, but incorporates them and can be used to account for the structure of the system. In that, we focus on the DDF framework, the differential difference framework. Nothing new, but it is a framework which allows us to parameterize systems in a way which accounts for the heterogeneity of the delays. So in particular, in this framework for each delay, we construct a vector RI, which is some comp combination of these parts which is then delayed, uh, and the delay i only affects ri. And then the outputs of those ris, the delayed outputs, come back into this vector, which influences the dynamics. So this framework, this uh, parameterization, allows us to efficiently account for the structure of the problem. Furthermore, this uh, DDF model is uh, easy to represent in some of the more uh, computationally oriented representations. And in particular, uh, we focus on the ODE-PD representation. It's easy to convert a DDF to an ODE-PD representation. The only difference is we take those vectors ri, we make them the boundary conditions on a transport equation, where we accelerate the flow through the uh, transport equation depending on the delay. So small delays 
move quickly, large delays move slowly, and the spatial domain of the PDE is normalized to be 0, negative 1. So this can be used within the backstepping framework or whatever simulation tool you use for simulating PDEs. Likewise, the conversion to a pi, if you're into pies, is likewise straightforward, although in this case the state of the system is slightly different. It's not the PDE state, it's the partial derivative of the PDE state. But again, there are tools for analysis and control of pies, which we won't focus on, details of pies. So we focus on the, what, the conversion from a DDE to a DDF in a way which accounts for the structure of the problem and identifies that structure automatically. So let's start with the naive approach to conversion of a DDE to the DEF, and that's where there's absolutely no structure to the problem whatsoever. And in this case, what you've got to do is just output all of these vectors to every delay channel. So every delay channel gets all of the vectors in there. In this way, uh, each of the delays uh, comes back into V, but there's no reduction in infinite dimensional component of the system whatsoever. It's still n plus n plus p times k. So this is the naive conversion. It doesn't give you any structure. Likewise, from the NDS to the DDF, uh, we do the same thing. It's just now we output even more information, including the derivative of the state. So then the question is how to, given a DDF, uh, which has been converted from a naive, naive conversion formula, how to identify low dimensional uh, information in the delay. So to do that, we look at this delayed channel from the naive conversion, and we examine how that channel influences the dynamics through this channel V. And in particular, all the ways it can influence the dynamics are parameterized by these matrices here. Now it's important to note that for very small systems, say for example, where the delay i only affects xi, only one of the elements of this big concatenated matrix will be non-zero. So there's only going to be one element of this entire matrix which is non-zero. And so we can account for that automatically by performing an SVD on this concatenated matrix. So when we can do the SVD, we get a u and a v, which are unitary, and we get the singular values on the diagonal. Now in this particular case, of course, only one of the singular values will be non-zero. In the general case, there may be more, but let's consider the general case. So in that case, we take all the singular values which are zero, and we eliminate them and eliminate the corresponding vectors over here. And this allows us to create a much smaller representation of the same matrix with very small internal dimension. In particular, the internal dimension here, if this is u and this is v, i, uh, will be one. And then we use that to construct a much lower dimensional delay channel by taking this matrix V and multiplying it by the uh, state. So in this case, there's only this, the, the case we just mentioned, the size of this delay channel will be just one. So we can apply that to networks and maybe systems which have less obvious structure to them. Uh, so we have four cases here, uh, two networks and two unstructured problems. Uh, so this is a chain of n spring masses. This is a chain of n showering users. Uh, in e both cases, we have n delays and n states. So if we just use the naive conversion formula, and this is, doesn't even account for input delays or output delays, uh, we get very large state spaces, which are clearly greater than 50 and therefore intractable. We apply the SVD reduction technique, however, and we get much smaller systems going from 400 to 10 infinite dimensional components. Uh, likewise, for these structurally less obvious problems, we also get significant reduction from 8 to 2 and from 10 to 5. So how, do we, how can I use these, uh, this SVD reduction technique? Well, this has been implemented within the PyTools framework, not necessarily because I'm pushing for uh, use of Pies, but because PyTools has an existing interface for defining DDEs and DDFs. In particular, the uh, interfaces uh, DDE and DDF allow for input of user-defined DDEs and DDFs. Uh, if you don't want to input your own, you can use the libraries which uh, exist. Uh, these are initialization techniques. Uh, these are conversion formula. So here we're converting naively from NDS to DDF, DDE to DDF, and DDF to PIES. 
the minimization routine, the SVD reduction techniques, are in these two uh, routines here, which minimize a DDE as a DDF and minimize an existing DDF as a DDF. So we then apply these to evaluate the computational impact uh, to, again, here we're, we're talking about PIs, LPIs for optimal control analysis and stability. So in particular, LPIs are generalization of LMIs and they can solve problems like L2 gain, H-infinity optimal estimation, H-infinity optimal control. So applying then these reduced models to the four examples we had before, we can see the associated computational complexity reductions. So while the original models were all intractable for the network cases with five and 10 users, and five and 10 delays, I should say, uh, the problems now after reduction are relatively tractable, the largest one being 10,000 seconds. And again, we've gone from a 400 dimensional, that's 10 delays and 10 users, uh, to something which runs in 94 seconds. These are all executed within the controller synthesis framework, H-infinity optimal control, and these are stability analysis problems. So finally, we conclude by extolling the advantages of the DDF framework for representing structure. We have proposed an automated system for conversion of DDEs and DDFs and neutral delay systems to DDFs, which account and identify for the structure of the problem. Uh, it's implemented within the PyTools framework, but that's not to push you to use Pies, simply because it has a pre-existing user interface for declaration of these systems. So you don't need to convert to a Pi, you can just convert to a DDF. Conversions Bob, is very fast, and hopefully these results will find use in allowing uh, existing software tools and simulation techniques to be applied to large-scale networks and large-scale problems.